full body? No, I don't believe that we are. No? No, I uh, think that's the lowest uh, the lowest form of what we are, actually. Right. So what would be a step above of that, then? Just something a little more cognizant of what we're giving back to the world, really, in my opinion. You know, if we're thinking about it a little bit more, I mean, really anything above what we're doing right now is, is better. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if, if we aren't our physical bodies, and it seems that way when you look at science, says that every cell in our body is replaced every five to seven years. So if that's the case, how could any piece of us that, that we take to be our um, intangible self that hasn't changed ever since we were a kid up until now, that little thing that we feel as I, it can't be physical if every physical bit of our body has changed over and over again since childhood. So there must be some sort of non-physical uh, continuum, which people call the soul or consciousness. Right. It seems that there's an intangible part of us, and we transmit consciousness into our physical bodies through the brain, as opposed to consciousness coming from the brain, which is what classical physics says. Um, instead, uh, I argue that consciousness is a priori. Consciousness is what comes first. And in fact, the one consciousness, infinite consciousness, God, whatever you'd want to call that, that would be the first thing before the Big Bang. Uh, materialist science likes to take everything all the way back to a Big Bang. And before that, there was no space, no time, no matter. But then suddenly, for no reason, out of nothing, came everything. In this sneezing Big Bang uh, singularity, everything comes from that. And so... Uh, it starts with stars and suns and moons and planets and then uh, uh, water and then life comes out of the water and changes from form into form from a fish to a frog to a monkey and then to humans. And somewhere along all that, uh, consciousness just magically comes into existence. That's the scientific materialist paradigm. They'd like you to believe that for no reason, nothing became everything we see today. And just because of the physical evolution and adaptation, with no intelligence behind it, life, intelligence, consciousness, and our complex internal immaterial worlds of emotion and thought and everything just arose by accident. And scientists have actually, uh, or mathematicians have done the, um, the odds against our universe evolving that way. Even in their paradigm, they say something like, uh, if, if the physical forces that created life and everything were different just to the slightest degree, um, you know, not, none of this would have evolved. And the chances are like one uh, to the 22nd, 23rd power, something like that. Um, so for me, that's, that's quite an argument for intelligent design. Um, and, and I don't even need an argument, to be honest. I can just, uh, you know, taste a mango look at a sunset, hear children's laughter, um, you know, feel an orgasm. And I can tell that this world was purposefully, intelligently created. And to me, it just seems silly to assume that the world was unintelligently designed and just through coincidental forces, everything came into being uh, accidentally. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. It's, it seems a lot more synchronistic than coincidental for me as well. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Like, like, how do you go from, you know, like you said, having nothing all of a sudden and one day, bang, it's all right there. The front lawn's all nice and manicured. Everybody's like living the perfect life. It just, you know, it, it, it does come from thinking. It comes from, you know, like you had said it best. It's like, how do you not have intelligence in the design if intelligence comes from part of the exposure to that life? Exactly. There's, there's got to be some kind of uh, there's got to be some intelligence behind that backing it up. And I think that that's the originating thing is that there was only intelligence, and uh, that's that's what the Upanishads, the, the Vedas, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, and all these other books they talk about there being Brahma, which is the original one infinite consciousness 
completely uh, objective, all known to itself, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. And so imagine if that was your existence, what would you do? I mean, what, what do you do if, as an infinite being, all known to yourself, all powerful? Uh, the Upanishad says that, well, it gets boring. God got bored, and so the only thing he can do is to play hide-and-seek, to play make-believe, to take subjective packets of himself, create a physical world experience, and then place those subjective packets of consciousness into other physical beings. So you get Wendy and Max and Eric and this dog and that cat and this tree and that rock. But in reality, it's all just Brahma. It's all just God. Um, think about it. No two trees, no two rocks, no two people are exactly alike. Yet we have names to define them, right? This is a tree and that's a tree, but this is not a tree. Uh, but really, no two trees are exactly alike. So when we classify them and we name anything, any noun that we give a name to, it's actually an abstraction. There really aren't there really isn't a thing tree because every example we have of it is different. And it's the same with everything that we have a name for. So in reality, there is only one meta thing, which is everything, which is God, which is the universe, nature, whatever you want to call it. That's the objective, real thing. And then the maya, the illusion, is this feeling of I am and I am not, this feeling of separateness where you think you're Wendy and Max and Eric, as opposed to Brahma, just having this subjective experience on this physical plane as this physical being. Yet in reality, we're playing hide and seek. We're experiencing and playing in this physical world because that's all there is to do when you're God. There's nothing else to do but to fake yourself into that you're God and then fractally shooting down subject packets of your consciousness into little, uh, you know, physical beings that can all interact with each other. And then you have this cyclical nature of forgetting that you're God, and then suddenly, slowly remembering, hey, wait a minute, you're not Wendy, I'm not Eric. We're, we're both, we're all God, all this is God, all this is one thing. You know, everything is in motion, too. There's another point from galaxies down to molecules and atoms. Everything's in motion, nothing is still. Everything is always in motion. How can there be separate things? There's just one continual dance of this, this energy. So no two things are exactly alike, and everything is in motion. That's so what you're saying, what you're saying, Eric, one, is uh, what you're saying, Eric, is that if there is a god or God is up there and he's basically trying to figure out what to do next. Uh, basically, what, what I'm saying is, like, if you got a god up there who's who's more or less trying to run a show, and he's just looking down on this world like it's an experiment, like you had said, what is he going to do with all this free time? You know, uh, uh, you know, he's 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 well scheduled out, but in this time, he's got to create something to amuse himself. You know, is it possible to think that that same god would would create havoc and chaos and and you know the, the way he gives free will? to people is it is it not almost like a joke because he could easily fix the whole thing and say you know what everything's going to be great for the rest of your lives when you die it's all going to be peachy everything's going to be nice all heavenly and billowy you know but why why you know why does he why in our terms as people does he we have to have that fear factor in there how are we controlled by that well to have the depth and breadth of experience that we have here what god has to do is forget that he's a singularity, and he has to create this physical world, which we can clearly see is dualistic. Male, female, good and evil, inhale, exhale, sun, moon, day, night, sleep, awake. We've got all these dichotomies. Uh, it, it's a dualistic physical world that we're in. Um, but God is not dualistic. God is singular. And so the singular objective entity gets bored of his nothingness and creates the physical world. I'm not necessarily saying that he's like up, up in the clouds watching the physical world, but rather that it's like we're all part of God's dream. Everything in the physical world is kind of happening inside the mind of this one infinite consciousness. And uh, quantum physics has kind of proven that. Uh, we can go into that later uh, if you want. But um, That'd be perfect. More, 
sure. More abstractly, uh, I've said, when you die, a piece of God wakes up and realizes that he was only dreaming. It's like when you're dreaming, you have all these different people, situations, atm you know, different atmosphere, environment that you create, and there's all this drama going on, whatever. And then suddenly, boom, you wake up and you realize, hey, wait a minute, all those different people, that, that little world I was in, everything, that was just me. It wasn't separate people. It wasn't a, a, a separate world or whatever. It's just me. And that's what happens when we die. You realize that you're connected to everything. You are God. You are part of the oneness. You are just having this physical experience on this dualistic plane. Um, so, so to get back to, to what you're saying, the, the reason that we have to have evil or bad things or pain or, or all these other things and not just have it be this super happy wonderland is if it is that, that that's how it, that's how it is for God anyway. He's got it. He's all knowing, all powerful, objective. Um, that gets boring. There's nothing to it. There's no separate thing. There's no story. What do you do with that existence? So they say it, it's necessary for for God to separate himself into Satan, if you want to go by Christian exactly. terms, or, or evil, or whatever, just so that there's a story, just so there's something going on. Otherwise, it's just infinite consciousness, completely known to itself, just existing in the ether. How is that, um, you know, how, <laughs> you know what I mean, the Upanishads? Literally yeah, how do you, said, how do you, God is bored. They use the word. How do bored. you actually, how do you actually exist with that? You know, like what is, what is existence if that's all you are? It's just a, a wavelength, you know? I mean, so the it's creation more than that. The creation of the world, the creation of the material world is almost an inevitability. It's what has to happen. God has to separate himself into a dualistic universe because there's nothing else to do. That's the logical thing to do if you're infinite consciousness. In the Christian version, there's, uh, there's Satan or Lucifer, and he's he's God's highest angel or something at first, and but then he falls, and a lot of times he's associated with the ego. And to bring that into what we're talking about, I see it as, okay, God is, is Brahma, it's the one objective infinite consciousness, and Satan is his best angel, so to speak, because Satan is the evil part of the duality. If there's just God, there is no duality yet. So God has to create Satan or the evil. So like I said, so that we can have this dualistic universe so that we can experience the breadth and depth of possibility. If there wasn't evil, extreme evil and extreme good and everything in between, if there was only, say, extreme good, then th there's really no possibility. You're like robots. You're like angelic robots running on repeat. So Satan is, is good in the sense that he brings about the potential for infinite experience but he has to fall he has to fall into evilness and so do we we have to fall from being god to being subjective packets of consciousness in this physical world humans with the i am i am not experience of eric wendy and matt and our ego is that satan part because our ego is the part that uh sees us as an individual separate from the whole but in reality we are the whole we're god we're not eric we're not wendy we're god exactly we're god 